Americans and many people worldwide don't even know Pacific Island peoples exist. American schools, textbooks, and teachers often don't even mention America's other indigenous people or these territories. What most Americans do know is often romanticized ideas about island paradises and tourist hotspots. In real life, these Pacific Island nations were seized by outsiders, by America, Britain, Germany, Japan, France, Spain, Portugal, New Zealand, and the Netherlands. These islands were taken for military bases, for resources, plantations, and local labor. The takeovers were often very violent, and also with high death rates from disease. Most invaders had no intention of ever giving these people independence, the vote, or civil rights. Some only became independent as recently as the 1990s. Some remain under outsider control even today, and are denied the vote and civil rights. Some have become minorities in their own homelands, their languages and religions at times banned. Their young forcibly assimilated. But it did not have to be this way. These islands could have remained independent nations. The colonizers could have been defeated or convinced to give independence. Some could have become states with full rights within the nations that invaded them. Some Pacific Island people could even become leaders within the colonial powers. My name is Al Carroll, I'm Associate Professor of History at Northern Virginia Community College. I've written mostly about wars, veterans, human rights, and genocide. My next history book will be Genocide Denial in America, about the seven genocides against indigenous people that took place in the U.S. that most people were never taught about, don't know, or deny. I've also written some science fiction, mostly alternate history. One story, Timely Saviors, appeared in a short story collection, The Witness Paradox. I'm also, together with Rob Schmidt of Bluecorn Comics, editing and putting out a short story alternate history collection, What If Natives Won? I've also written a sci-fi alternate history book, The Man in Black, the first of a series. There are other nations that could have seized Hawaii, and there are many ways Hawaii could stay independent, as we will discuss in a future video. In some cases, Hawaii would be better off, and in some cases, far worse. Sometimes, like Spain, Hawaiians would be far worse off at first, and better off to over time, compared to now, under the U.S. The Rui Lopez de Villalobos expedition was the first Europeans to see Hawaii in 1541. Villalobos was the second Spanish expedition to the Philippines, but Spanish conquest was not for 20 years. If the same pattern held, Spanish conquerors might first try to seize Hawaii around 1561. Then there are two ways Spanish conquest might go. They might conquer Hawaii much like they conquered the Philippines, playing one leader off against another. Or it might be conquest like it was on Guam, 20 years of extreme brutality against the United People that ended up with the deaths of over 80% of its people. One big difference between Spanish conquest and American conquest would be mestizaje, like the Philippines or Latin America. American racists regarded Hawaiians and Asians as racially inferior and rarely mixed. Spaniards mixed freely from the start. Spain had racial classifications and rights based on racial mixture. Being mixed wasn't criminalized or with a stigma like in American, America or the English colonies. If many Hawaiians had been killed off, Spaniards bring in Filipinos or Chinese as laborers. They may even bring in Mexicans as they did in the Philippines or even African slaves. You likely see revolts in Spanish Hawaii much like in the Philippines and a gradual growth of Hawaiian mestizo nationalism, much like you saw in Filipino mestizos. They were educated in Spanish universities, and also the local nobility likely intermarried with Spaniards. It's at this point the Spanish-American War begins. The Spanish-American War likely ends much like it did in our own time, except that the U.S. seizes Hawaii, taking advantage of local revolt. And just like in our own time, American troops then turn on the people they are supposedly there to free. In our own time line, that was Filipinos. In this case, it's Hawaiians. In our own time, U.S. troops killed at least 200,000 Filipinos to crush the revolt, perhaps as many as a million. As many as one in seven Filipinos were killed. There were as many as a million and a half Hawaiians before European contact. The population dropped by 90% from forced labor, starvation, and then disease. But if Spain conquered in the 1560s, the population has time to recover and even expand, mixed with likely Filipinos, Chinese, Mexicans, and Africans. 
a brutal U.S. invasion might kill perhaps one in seven people or 200,000. So early Spanish conquest ends with the U.S. just taking Hawaii at the same time, but likely much more violently. Is Hawaii any better off? Maybe. In our own time, the Philippines were U.S. territory, but finally let go in 1946 after World War II. The same thing may happen to Hawaii. Then Hawaii becomes prosperous as an independent nation. Or it could be a U.S. state, the same as in our own time, but likely with more native Hawaiians since they had more time to recover from the first invasion. What if Russia seizes Hawaii in 1814? A German working for a Russian company, George Schaefer, was sent to get back property from a Russian ship that wrecked on Hawaiian shores. Instead, he tried to get allies to overthrow the Hawaiian king Kamehameha. Schaefer sought an ally in King Kamwale, the leader of Kaui and Nihau. Only four years later, Kamali had defeated an invasion by Kamehameha. When the Kamehameha brought in foreign ships and cannon, Kamali agreed to surrender peacefully. He died in 1819, but his son also tried to regain the chiefdom. Schaefer and Kamali signed treaties for trade and the conquest of Kamehameha's island, Oahu. Schaefer commanded 300 Hawaiian troops, built three forts, and bought two U.S. ships intended for war. A Russian warship arrived, but refused to take Schaefer's side. Instead, Americans offered Kamehameha ships. Schaefer's Hawaiians turned against him, and he was sent into exile. If the Russian captain had sided with Schaefer in the invasion that happens before Kamehameha is prepared, it has a chance to succeed. If Schaefer had won and Hawaii is a Russian colony, the first item they wanted was sandalwood, not just for lumber and building, but food and perfume. They also would quickly want food for their Alaska colony. Russia is less likely to sell Alaska to the U.S. 50 years later. Both the U.S. and Britain will resent Russia taking Hawaii. It's very possible Russia loses Hawaii in the Crimean War to the British in the 1850s. A squad of British ships with Marines could take it. Britain also had plans to seize Hawaii in 1874. Either way, British control would be different from Russian and American, mostly in who it brings in as labor. Most likely the main laborers will be Indians, though some Filipinos and Chinese are also likely as the nearest source. The British are less likely to carry out the crushing of Hawaiian culture that American takeover brought. There likely is no forced assimilation, no banning the language for 90 years, no outlawing the Hawaiian religion. The lands that American colonists seized likely get taken by British colonists and then given back once the British are gone. Japan is likely to, to bomb the British fleet in Pearl Harbor in 1941 or earlier. The U.S. would still join the war because the Philippines and Guam will be attacked also. The war will be fought almost the same except for British ships lost in Hawaii. The Kingdom of Hawaii would likely regain its independence in the 1950s when Britain was being forced to give up its other colonies. Hawaii becomes as developed and prosperous as Singapore. Both their locations are very strategic for trade. Air travel became common for the average person in the 1950s, not just the wealthy. Hawaii is an ideal stopover between Asia and North America. If Hawaii had been colonized by Spain, Russia, or Britain, it likely is better off than under the U.S. It's independent and prosperous today. And even if it is not as prosperous, Hawaiians are not dominated. Their land owned by Americans from the mainland. Most people would prefer their own poverty to semi-prosperity under a foreign power. This is the end of the video. Please repost freely, like, share, and comment. This has been Pacific Island Victory. Look for my other series, What If Natives Won, Latin American Victory, and Sci-Fi Race and Racism. Next time we will discuss, What If Samoa Stays Independent?